Hello, I am Jody Wolf. You're watching Expose on March 14, 2016, 1.58 a.m., 59 a.m., Birmingham, Alabama. Topic, do you remember the movie The 300? Really good. 300 men went into battle against hundreds of thousands. Well, that really happened, but not quite that way. I'm not saying that didn't happen either, but this one... Listen here, um, and this is something that we will be confronting in in near time. So we need to think about and, and listen to what this message is, if you don't mind. Gideon's day in the book of Judges. Gideon had to hide out in a certain place to sound an alarm to the village that the Amalekites and the Midianites were coming to rob their crops. Keep in mind, there's over 300,000 people, and they always left Gideon's people just a little, but yet there were plenty of villages to feed, but yet these villages also went without food because it was always taken from them. So God told Gideon, he said, I want you to put together an army and I will tell you what to do and I want you to go and take out the Amalekites and the Midianites. And Gideon said, you talking to me? God says, yes. He said, you know, after some time, Lord, you got the wrong man. Finally, he said, test me. He said, okay. So Gideon killed an animal and laid it on a rock, big rock, and said, if you're real, take that animal as an offering. And immediately a fire swirled around that animal. In about five seconds, it disappeared. It was gone. Gideon said, okay, you got my attention. So God told him, Gideon, go get your men, sound your alarm, which is a horn, trumpet, and round up as many as you can, and you come back here. So he did that, and when he got back, he had 32,000 people. And God said, hey, Gideon, you brought too many people. And Gideon said, we got 32,000. He said, you got too many. Look around. See those who you have who are afraid. See those who are shaking. See those who, who show fear and send them back to their families. So Gideon did just that in Judges 7, 3. And 22,000 of the 32,000 went back to their families. That left 10,000 people to fight the war that would be against 300,000 plus. But then the Lord said to Gideon, the people still, the people you still have here are still too many. You, you've got to send some back. He said, what are you talking about? He said, look, send the 10,000 down to the water and tell them to drink and prepare for battle. So Gideon did that. And when they went down to the water, now God told Gideon, he said, you watch the ones who drink water and you watch the ones who stands up and drinks water while watching at the same time. Out of the 10,000 men, 9,700 of them just submerged their heads in water didn't look up, didn't look around, just sat and drank. 300 men would scoop water in their hands and stand back up, and as they were drinking water, they would look around, always aware of their surroundings, especially looking for their enemy. And when God saw this, he told Gideon, he said, send all of them home but these 300. And by then, Gideon knew that, 
you know, hey, he's God's got my back. So he sent them all back, but 300. So God told him, said, okay, you take the 300. Now, these men aren't here in Gideon and God, okay? They're just here in Gideon. He said, you take the 300 and give each one of them a clay pot, each one of them a trumpet, each one of them a stick, a club in which to burst the clay pot with, and each one of them a lantern to set in that clay pot. And we're talking about midnight. He said, then you post 100 here, 100 here, 100 here. You're evenly spaced on the mountain rim above this army of over 300,000. And he said, when you get spaced out that way, then join together, forming a complete circle around them. And when I tell you to, of course, he's telling me then to tell this to his men, and he's telling his men, and when I sound my trumpet, you also sound your trumpet, Judges 7, 16. And when you do, break the clay pots with your clubs and yell at the same time, the sword of God, and sound your trumpet. That's exactly what they did. The, the, Gideon, uh, the Amalekites and the Midianites in the in the valley down there, over 300,000 strong, were so absolutely scared to death, all they could see was an army that circled them far larger than what they were. These pots bursting, and they look like explosions. And they see that a giant army is coming upon them. So the Amalekites and Midianites at 2 a.m. With, with no fire, no light going on the bottom now, there's just two or three watch, watchmen out there they start fighting and they fight and they fight and they fight until they're all defeated. Gideon's men never left the brim of the hill. Every man below died. They fought and killed each other. That is going to be the very same thing to happen to those that come against the Jews in the end days. God will confuse them as they surround the mountains and ready to attack the Jews, and they will fight and they'll kill each other. One part of six will return home. So what this story is telling you, it doesn't matter how big that mountain is that's in front of you. God with you, that mountain does not stand in your way. And just remember that it's God that made everything, including you, and it was God that died on the cross because he loved you. And if he would create you and love you so much, he would die for you then what else would he not do for you if you ask? Simply ask him, break that outer shell, break that clay pot and let that light that the Holy Spirit is in you, let it shine. Let it out. And the Holy Spirit will absolutely make a way for you. Doesn't matter how dark it is, doesn't matter how big it is. God promises that and judges. Good story. Very true. And again, it's going to happen on the mountains above and around Israel. It will take the Jews seven months to bury the dead, seven years to burn the weapons. Not one tree will be cut from the forest during that time. He did it for Gideon. Gideon was a just man. The Malachites and the others, the Midianites, they were, they had tainted or 
compromised DNA. God doesn't just go about killing tribes. They, none had pure DNA. They were all compromised because, as the Bible said, as in the days of Noah, giants were in those days and after. And this is all the people, the villages that the Jews along the way had to kill. But yet today, everybody says, look how sadistic God is. Well, these people didn't have souls. Fallen angels in Nephilim, they can't produce a soul. All, all they can produce is a dem, demon spirit or a demonic spirit. That's what's left of them. They never had a soul. So it's not like they're going to hell. They'll die and go away. You got a soul and you need to get the Holy Spirit in you. And when you do, you just crack that outer shell and you see what God will do for you today, just as he did it a long time ago, 4,800 years ago to be exact. And, by the way, as 4,800 years before, the God of the Islamic world came into being. And who was he? He was not an Allah, guys. That guy was a demigod. He was a God with little g. He was a Elohim. But he came 4,800 years after our creator created man. Jody Wolf Exposed.